Welcome everyone, I am your host Kurosumi and today I will be giving you a wonderful script of an amazing musical to talk about. But don't worry, I am not going to sing anything because that would be way too embarrassing for me to handle. Anyways, according to my AP Lit teacher, this episode was optional, but I've decided to do it. I might as well finish what I have started. I will be saying the characters involved in a script and giving a brief breakdown of them before I start. Now before I begin, I want to deeply apologize for any noise involving people, birds, cars. I do apologize for it. Lily is a female and can be between the ages of 28 through 38. Lily is Mary's aunt and Archibald Craven's wife. She died of a tragic accident within her garden and metaphorically haunts the walls of Whistlewaite Manor. Mary Lennox. She's a 10-year-old girl sent to live with her uncle Archibald. When her parents passed away from cholera in India, Mary is quite the curious explorer and often finds herself in trouble. She is very stubborn and will always fight for what she believes in. Mrs. Medlock, female, the age is flexible. She is Archibald's housekeeper and is very cold. Dr. Neville Craven, male, the age can be between 35 through 45. He is Archibald's brother. Dr. Craven is trapped by the idea that he is responsible for the caretaking of Cullen, even though he was never loved back by Lily. He still is deeply in love with her, which adds to his unwillingness to move on and leave Whistlewaite. Martha is female. She is between the ages of 18 through 30. She is a faithful housemaid. Martha grew up near Yorkshire and has accent to prove it. Although she is from a lower class family, her wisdom is far beyond her age. Archibald Craven, male, the age can be between 35 through 45. He is Mary's uncle and Lord of Whistlewaite Manor. He has a hunchback. Archibald is haunted by the past and afraid of the future. He locks himself away both physically and mentally from the world. Mary painfully reminds him too much of his wife, Lily, who died 10 years ago. Ben Weatherstaff, male, the age is flexible. He's the head gardener. He was secretly entrusted to take care of the garden after Lily's death. He knows a great deal about the history of the garden and the grounds it sits on. He has worked for the family for many years, and he calls himself an old man. Dickon, male, between the ages of 16 through 25. He's Martha's younger brother. He looks after the sick plants and animals within the Wesselwaite grounds, including Mary. He is a young man between the world of child imagination and adult reasoning. He befriends Mary and convinces her to take care of the garden. Colin Craven, male, Archibald's 10-year-old son, has spent his life in bed due to a heart condition. He is very stubborn and throws temper tantrums to get what he wants. He believes his father hates him for causing Lily's death. Mrs. Winthrop, female, the age is flexible. She is the headmistress of a private school. Mrs. Winthrop prides herself on nurturing girls with tempers, but to her, Mary seems to be too much to handle. The characters listed down below are named the Dreamers. They are people from Mary's life in India. They haunt her until she finds her new life in the course of the story. Rose Lennox she is female. Her age can be between 
28 through 38. She is Mary's mother, a dreamer from the past, who doesn't understand how her sister Lily could truly love Archibald. Rose is very loyal to her husband and refuses to leave India during the cholera outbreak that takes her life. Captain Albert Lennox, male, the age can be between 30 to 40 years. He's Mary's father. Albert tries to send Rose out of India during the cholera outbreak. Alice, female, the age is flexible. She's Rose's friend. Lieutenant Wright, male, the age is flexible. He's an officer in Mary's father's unit. Lieutenant Shaw, male, the age is flexible. He's a fellow officer. Major Shelley, male, the age is flexible. He's an officer. Mrs. Shelley, female, the age is flexible. She's Major Shelley's wife. Major Holmes, male, the age is flexible, an officer. Claire Holmes, female, the age is flexible. She's Major Holmes' wife. Fakir, male, the age is flexible. He is itinerant Hindu ascetic. Aya, female, age is flexible. She's Mary's Indian nanny. The Secret Garden is a Tony Award-winning musical that is based on the novel written in 1911 by Frances Hogson Burnett. In the story and in the musical, it is in 1906. The settings are Colonel, India, and Whistlewaite Manor. North Yorkshire, England. Act 1 prologue begins with a song sung by Lily. She is singing about her garden and how safe it is. An Indian fakir soon appears and he sings in his native language. The translation reads, The season of magic, the summer days, prayers and rituals. May relieve her from sickness. Come spirit, come charm, come days that are warm. Come magical spells. Come help her get well. Mary's father, Albert, carries Mary to bed and kisses her goodnight. She soon falls asleep. Rose, Albert, Alice, the two lieutenants, Wright and Shaw, Major Holmes, his wife Claire, a fakir, and Mary's ayah are all present in the game of drop the handkerchief, using a red handkerchief. We soon realize that the players are not just playing a game, they are dying of Corolla. Children's echoes are heard and they chant, Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? Not so well, she said, see the lilies dead, pull it out and out you go. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, where does your garden grow? Far too hot, she cried, see my rose has died, dig it out and out you go. It's referencing a nursery rhyme named Mary Mary Quite Contrary, but they are not talking about flowers. They are talking about the lives of Lily and Rose. They are the ones who have died. Mary Lennox is discovered by survivors of the outbreak. They tell her that mostly everyone she has known has died due to Corolla. This including her parents and her ayah. She is sent to live in England with her uncle Archibald Craven, who is a very mysterious man and is a hunchback. He has spent years grieving the death of his wife Lily, who had passed away in her garden ten years ago. The manor is indeed Archibald's, but his brother, Dr. Neville Craven, is the one who manages it. Mrs. Medlock, the housekeeper, welcomes Mary coldly upon her arrival as she speaks to her about Archibald not being able to cope with the death of his wife as the years went on. This is where the song, The House Upon the Hill, is sung by the dreamers. The house is supposedly haunted by the ghosts from the pasts of Archibald and Mary. Mary is alone, thus she despises her new surroundings. The old house is noisy, and memories are louder within it. Mary and Archibald both think they hear their lost loved ones. I heard someone crying is sung. 
Act 1, Scene 1 The next morning, Mary meets Martha, the chambermaid. Martha entices Mary outside with tales of the gardens, a secret hidden garden. If I had a fine white horse, is sung. Act 1, Scene 2 Archibald remains within his ghostly memories of Lily, a girl in the valley, is sung. Lily was the one who planted a garden on his land and also within his heart. He is unable to let go. Act 1, Scene 3 Mary goes exploring. She discovers the middle-walled garden that is well overgrown with ivy. She soon encounters the gardener that goes by the name of Ben Weatherstaff. It's a maze, is sung by him. The song states that ever since Lily's death, the garden has been locked, for it reminded Archibald way too much of her. The overgrown weeds have hit the door and it has been lost as the years went by. Dickon, Martha's brother, begins to sing Winters on the Wing. He stumbles upon Mary Lennox and he gives her some seeds. He claims that he can speak with animals and even teaches her how to speak to a robin. The robin guides Mary to the garden's secret key. Show me the key is sung. Act 1, Scene 4 Inside the manor, Neville and Archibald discuss how Neville abandoned his medical practice to take care of Colin. When Mary suddenly enters, she asks Archibald for a bit of earth to plant a garden of her very own. He allows it, and when she leaves, he tells Neville that his dreams of Lily have been worsening, which Neville only blames on the arrival of Mary, who strongly resembles her aunt Lily. Curious of Mary's request for some dirt, Archibald can't help but think about how Lily and Mary both share interest in gardening. This is where he begins to sing a bit of earth. Act 1, Scene 5. The Yorkshire gloom turns into a fearsome storm. The music cue for Storm Number 1 is played. Archibald and Neville grieve separately over Lily. It is revealed that both men were in love with her. They sing Lily's eyes. Act 1, Scene 6. Mary again hears crying and wanders around in the hallways. The music cue for Storm Number 2 is played. Act 1, Scene 7 and 8. Mary uncovers the source of the crying. It is Colin, a secret cousin of hers who has been confined to bed since his birth, when his mother Lily died. Colin has been in bed his entire life due to his father, Archibald, by most likely following Neville's misleading medical advice, who feared that Colin would also become a hunchback. Colin tells Mary that Every night, he dreams of a man who comes to him and reads to him from a magical book. A round-shouldered man is sung. However, just as Mary and Colin embrace each other's long-desired company, Neville and Mrs. Medlock burst into the room and angrily tell Mary she is never to see Colin ever again because of his fragile medical condition. The storm reaches its peak, and distraught Mary runs outside where the ghost of Lily reveals the location of the hidden door to the garden, her garden, and Mary inserts the key. This is the end of Act 1. Act 2, Scene 1 begins with Mary thinking about her loved ones and her desire for the garden to offer her privacy and the chance to discover herself. The girl I mean to be is sung. Act 2, Scene 2 and 3 Neville recalls his love for Lily, and Neville wants Archibald to leave Misselwaite entirely to him. He wants full ownership of everything. Their thoughts are twisted together with ghostly echoes of old arguments between Lily and her sister Rose, who is Mary's mother. The arguments involve Archibald as being Lily's husband and a father of her children quartet is sung. Archibald has decided to slip away to Paris for a while. Before he leaves, he goes to Colin to read a fairy tale to him while the boy sleeps. 
The music cue for Race You to the Top of the Morning is played. It is revealed that the round-shouldered man is not a germ at all. He is Colin's father. Act 2, Scene 4 Mary tells Dickon that she has finally been inside the garden, but the plants are all dead. Dickon soon explains to her that it's probably just dormant. Perhaps with some assistance, it would all go back. The music cue for Wick is played. Act 2, Scene 5 Mary tells Colin about the garden, but Colin is unwilling to go outside until he is encouraged by an inviting vision of his mother, Lily. The music cue, Come to my garden, lift me up, is played. Mary, Dickon, and Martha bring Colin to the garden in a wheelchair. Act 2, Scene 6. In the garden, it all magically has strengthened Colin, allowing him to rise from his wheelchair for the first time. The music cue, Come Spirit, Come Charm, is played. Ben reveals that Lily died giving birth to Colin from injuries sustained during an accident in the garden. Colin makes Mary and the staff promise to not tell Archibald about his recovery until he is able to fully walk. The music cue, A Bit of Earth, Reprise, is played. Act 2, Scene 7. Back in the house, Neville threatens to send Mary away to a boarding school. Mary throws a tantrum, thus the doctor smacks her which silences her completely. Act 2, Scene 8. Martha soothes and comforts Mary. She tells her to stay strong, and even encourages her to write to Archibald. The music cue, Hold On, is played. Mary writes to Archibald with Martha's help. The music cue, Letter Song, is played. She urges him to come home. Act 2, Scene 9. Archibald's emotional distress continues to dominate him. The music cue, Where in the World is played. Lily's ghost reappears and Archibald is able to see her. She tells him that she always loved him and blames herself for passing away. But they come to the conclusion that her death was no one's fault. From this, Archibald can finally let her go as she tells him to care for their child and go home to the garden. The music cue, How Could I Ever Know, is played. Act 2, Scene 10. Archibald returns. He enters the garden to find Colin completely healthy. Archibald, now a changed man, sends Neville away to his pair's flat and embraces both Mary and Colin back into his life. The spirits of Mary's parents join Lily, promising to keep the living safe for the rest of their days. The music cue finale is played as the show slowly comes to an end. Thank you for joining me on this journey.